But ladies, we're, so, we're over that. <laughs> like, bills are billing. It's 2024. We're not doing that shit no more, okay? We're not nuts anymore. Hey guys, and welcome back to Point Blank Period. You already know who it is. It is your girl, your sister, and your best friend. Back with another solo episode. That's just how we living right now. So whatever, back with another episode, y'all. It is so much going on in life because the moon has been mooning. And if you know, you know. And I'm just trying to get my life together, okay? I was at Jules today, and this guy, first of all, I shouldn't even tell this story, but this pissed me off, y'all. This biker downtown is going to bike in the middle of the regular driving way because they do have a bike lane all the way for about a mile. And I'm just driving slow as hell behind him. Like, first of all, why the f*** are you riding in front of me right now? This is not a vehicle, a motor vehicle. But anyway, he's just driving. So when I finally got over to whatever jewels right i beep the horn at him because like damn you just had me hold, held up for 10 minutes driving behind you while you just having a good nice day F nigga had the nerve to spin around he like oh she's going to jewels as i'm parking he slides into the fucking, um what do you call that the parking lot and bams my damn window in i'm like the moon is mooning okay and God is so good and, and you know what a lot of times men try to play with women like if I had a man in the car he would not have done that so then he zips behind me and I start backing up that's all I have to say but anyway let's keep it going y'all still lot going on we're gonna have a good one today all right so we're gonna try to keep it good energy high energy because it's enough going on let's get it started with my girl Remy Ma I absolutely love Remy Ma She's an amazing rapper. Um, I feel like after she got out of jail and everything, I think even before then, but her style has been styling. She has been looking amazing and very snatched um, since leaving jail. And honestly, since her, well, a little bit before her breakup with Papoose, who y'all know I used to love me some Papoose. I think the narrative was like so beautiful. I love black love. But as we know, they broke up. There were some allegations of cheating on Miss Remy Ma's hand and they were saying that she was cheating with one of her what do you call that what kind of rap is that battle rap people it's the black captain what's the first part of his name because i'm not a ba battle rap girly so it's easy the black captain right so she was supposed to cheat on him with easy the black captain who kind of looks like great value papoose papoose is sexy but easy is given great value version it'll do <laughs> um but yeah but y'all why is Remy Ma after all this time after everybody's been dragging her talking about her whatever she gets online on her live and responds to cheating rumors saying that she never cheated ain't it a little late sis ain't it like time for us to move on from that because you guys are not even together now so why would you even bring that up like why is now the time for you to prove to the world that you didn't cheat and you should have proved it a long ass time ago and none of us believe you I just want you to know I love you Remy and everything about you or whatever but girl none of us believe you and we don't even care at this point we all make mistakes I've had some easy to block captains in my past life and I've moved on from that. I've upgraded, done a little something different, a little something better. So I'm hoping that Remy just knows that she deserves her a good, fine man that's doing something with his life. Because, girl, you at a level. You are at a level. And, yeah, like, if we're going to leave from Papoose, upgrade. And not to say he might not be an upgrade spiritually. But, ladies, we're, so, we're over that. <laughs> like, bills are billing. It's 2024. We're not doing that shit no more, okay? We're not nuts anymore. So... Yeah, Remy, just let it go. Shout out to Papu. Shout out to Remy Ma. Shout out to Easy the Black Captain because he's the winner in the whole situation. Um, because why are we even talking about this, Remy? Let's talk about some of your music or whatever. Um, let's keep it moving. Ease on down the road to my girl, Glorilla. I feel like the aunties is like, we trying to take Gorilla back. I see all the girls at the Glorilla concert. So shout out to Glow. She looks amazing. Um, I would say Glorilla really had a a glow up from her first song from uh fnf to now she looks amazing and nobody can take that from her but it's been a little scandalous because one of her videos is going viral of her getting after her getting her makeup done they did like the little before and after if you're a makeup artist and you're doing somebody's makeup that is popular and popping you want to post your before and after so you can get some more clientele to come look at you and see what you're doing well 
Glorilla didn't like the way she looked in that before. And I get it, because sometimes I'd be like, wait, is that me? I don't like the way I look sometimes in my befores, right? But I think the thing was, it was bad lighting. And maybe the way... I think lighting just makes a huge difference. And maybe her skin wasn't completely moisturized or whatever. But if I was Glorilla, what I would do is like not give it any attention at all. Bitch, you popping right now. You sitting up here talking about or trying to justify the way that you were doing and saying the girl you didn't like the way she did her your makeup first of all you looked great at the end so let's not do that the lighting was trash and maybe the video should have been sent to you to get approved or whatever but let's think about it she might have gave you a discount or just did your makeup for free because of who you are I don't know but yeah girl don't don't let them bring you down you looked good let it go and don't even talk about that no more and too like it could have stayed within the the makeup artist's uh audience which right. I, I can imagine is like what a tenth or an eighth of the people that glorilla could reach but she brought even if she went viral this whole entire audience now she, like she did it she made it right i up. think she did that because it was going viral but just like you were saying it wouldn't have gone as viral if you would just be quiet and ignore it and then let it move on be beyonce on that shit do not respond to shit all the rumors they might be true then again they might not be when you start speaking on stuff you start validating people's opinions of you so if you want to justify how beautiful you are you're validating all the people that's thinking you ugly so girl forget them you look good move on leave the stylist alone the makeup artist because I think after that even Glorilla was kind of like being a little mean to her and I felt like that was unnecessary and it was just I don't want to say yeah it was disrespectful but it's definitely more than anything unnecessary like come on now and I mean I guess he said rumor has it she went back to the girl after that but even if you didn't go back to her twice girl just let it be what it is like she trying to work and eat or whatever let the girl go so let's keep it moving let's let's get into something a little bit more positive y'all know i love my glorilla not glorilla look at me talking about glorilla i'm talking about cardi b now y'all know i love me some cardi b okay she is just the girl that girl she has the energy she has amazing personality that i think just draws people so one good thing about Cardi B is Cardi B is right now standing up for Tyra Banks because a lot of you guys want to drag Tyra for her America's Next Top Model um, reality show, which was years and years and years ago. Like how long, when did that stop? And basically saying that she was too mean to the girls. Well, Cardi B is standing up for her saying that, no, she wasn't too mean to the girls. This industry is nasty. She was trying to prepare them for what they would go through. And even as a avid fan, like I used to watch all of those episodes. Like I was watching, okay, when Eva came on and she was a short model, I'm like, y'all, if I lose some weight, I'm going to America next time. <laughs> Look, but you can't be fat and short. We pick a pick pick something okay like i'm trying to takara it but i gotta lose 70 pounds to takara this shit because the girl gotta be skinny and short to make it but anyway um yeah so she's standing up for her saying basically in this industry they put you through dumbass impossible tasks like giving you shoes and outfits that don't fit making you wear things that are uncomfortable but you have to look like you're enjoying it these are things that tyra put these girls through on this show and it was nothing wrong with it Having them change their look. How many celebrities have completely changed their look from when they first started? Majority of them. That's what the business does. They sculpt and create you to be the cookie cutter image of what they think the, what do you call it? The outsiders need to see or your audience needs to see. So, I mean... It's kind of like the business. So shout out to Cardi B for standing up for her. She said, people got to toughen up. It's okay. This business is nasty and mean. People got to toughen up. Tasks task are tasking. Coming off of a fashion week. Where was she at? She was like in Paris or something. Mm -hmm. Doing fashion week or something like that. She was put through the ringer. Like she she get it. Right. And um, you know, she's, she's big into, like, the couture stuff, too. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, she got put in some outfits. Okay, and, and they shoes. were not comfortable. So she know. She was walking with her toes hanging off, clenching, okay? They do not feel good, but you have to look like it's enjoyable. So, yeah, shout out to Tyra Banks, who I absolutely love. 
I love Tyra for a different reason. Well, as you guys know, I have a long head. And Tyra also has a long head. So growing up, I'm like, oh, my God, I love Tyra. She has a long head and she has a big forehead. So, like, that's my girl. And I did not care what she did to those girls on that show. Because guess what? She was right. And I was dyeing my hair blonde. That's what I needed to give that fashion. Like, she had it. And I love her for that. Um, yeah. And she also gave a lot of people a platform who wouldn't necessarily wouldn't have necessarily gotten that platform that audience and that exposure so like something you won't have to give up for that we're gonna have to change your look friend but yeah shout out to them let's go on and ease on down the road to something else um wow because i was about to say something else not well this thing is not as happy right so as we know i live in chicago it's my hometown and lately things are getting spooky and we're not talking about a halloween type of situation so a few week, maybe about a week ago it's like mid-october they found a head in the in a box on the west side okay so we're gonna let you guys watch this little clip from the news reporting about a head in a box being found on the west side industrial oh, street on the near west side it was here on the sidewalk right next to a sports complex where chicago police made a disturbing discovery can you check out a suspicious object for me please 2700 west taylor police say officers were called just before six last night to investigate a box found on the sidewalk near taylor street and california avenue Does that they possibly see a, a human head inside an open amazon box while the caller was walking his dog Cook county medical examiner's office confirmed the remains found is in fact a human head an autopsy was conducted today but a cause and manner of death is still pending the gender race and age of the victim also unknown it's unclear right now how long the box had been sitting there before it was discovered who placed it there and who is the victim this is the second time this week that human remains were found in the city on sunday around 12 30 in the afternoon illinois state police say cpd discovered skeletal remains off the kennedy expressway at webster avenue the remains were found within an embankment area the victim hasn't been identified investigators now trying to figure out what happened to the victims in these two separate cases Okay, and with everything that we have going on in Chicago, so a lot of information was not given in that news report, right? They didn't really, I don't think they told us the sex, but we'll be corrected when we watch the video again, if I'm wrong. Um, the age of the person whose head it might be, the ethnicity of the person or anything like that. All we know is that a box with a head and it was found. It was a person walking their dog. And they're like, oh, well, I don't know if it's a real head or if it's like uh what do you call that like a halloween thing because you know in october people start with their halloween stuff early so we're thinking okay might be a halloween thing no it's not a halloween thing and i think the main reason why they did not give us many details because they did not want to start some type of race war black people are really getting a little frustrated with our um immigrant situation in chicago because of the resource problem in chicago chicago is very competitive when it comes to jobs when it comes to well, jobs that are going to pay you enough to live. We all know that minimum wage is not the minimum wage to live anymore. But with that being said, um, people with, well, with no benefits, people feel like they're getting a little bit undercut by people who also need to work who are not from Chicago. So long story short, they didn't tell us the ethnicity. They really didn't give us any specifics because it's already been rumors about um, race wars happening in Chicago. They said, was it O'Block or 63rd? They were like, yeah, it, it's the um, Venezuelans against the African, against the black gangs, which a lot of people said is not true, which I'm, yeah, it probably isn't true. But on the back of that, finding a head in a box maybe they're just trying to keep stuff under wraps and i'm going to keep following this story because that is completely crazy it is terrifying and i really 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 as a citizen want to know more information because what the hell is happening and i don't know when you find something like that i just feel like people are trying to send a message too and i think that's another reason why they did not want to say or it was a murderer who, who's into chopping up bodies who was a little bit, what you call that? A little bit sloppy with where he dropped the head. <laughs> like, okay, this nigga looking for the head. He's still looking for this shit. Maybe not. I don't know. But I, because 
to mo- the majority of people, it just doesn't make sense for a person to just drop a body part somewhere and not remember where they dropped it or not pick it up and put it in the car and drop it off where it belongs. Um, which also sounds nuts. So we're going to get off of this for a moment because now I'm nervous. I don't know what I'm, I don't know. It's a lot going on. Whatever's happening. We ask that it stop right now. We do not want to find no more body parts. Um, yeah, let's talk about something maybe a little bit more happy. Now, let me think about that because too much going on at the end. I feel like we getting it hit back to back to back to back. Like, Niggas is not letting up on us. Oh, something a little bit more happy. Y'all know my girl, Tiffany Hanger. Tiffany Hanger, okay. She is represented for the people. And I know all my dogs and people probably mad at me because I still love her. But y'all got to understand what I love about her. I love the idea of her. I love the Robin Hoodness of her. And even though her Robin Hood isms are really, really, really uh, for a tight select few. Um, it's still giving Robin Hood and I love me some Robin Hood. Rob from the rich, give to the poor. Black people have been doing it forever and, and I, I support that. But with all this being said, we all know she is being investigated by Mayor Lori Lightfoot. Yeah, because that's how they do us. They put us against us. But um, even through all that, what I love about Tiffany, she do not back down, never back down, never give up. This girl's doing her big one. And she's like, you know what? After all that, I'm running for re-election. What? Tiffany Henry 2025, girl, you are running for re-election? Oh, my God. I don't know if she's going to win or not. But I also do believe that it is like a, it is an excellent political move for her to run again. Because what it tells the people is that I don't think I've done anything wrong. I am being Ross uh wrongly accused of all these crimes against Dalton and I'm just a black woman doing my best with a city that's already been messed up with uh political issues that's already messed up and I'm only doing my best so she likes I'm gonna I'm gonna do it again I love that for her because Wow, we all know that she's running again, but she's been accused of financial mismanagement up into the millions, <laughs> corruption, and um, retaliation on former people that work for her. So I'm just like, wow, with all that, for her to have the wherewithal and the gump to be like, I'm doing it again. I salute you, Tiffany Henyard. And um, if you need some help, if you need uh, whatever, what you need, girl, I'm out there. Look, I am there. I'm going door to door with you. Actually, I want a good job because I want to be able to get up to $100,000 in overtime. But we're going to let that be what it is. Tiffany here. You have a good night. Um, with that being said, y'all know my boy Shamar has been going crazily viral. As always, Shamar is. I mean, I'm happy about it because in the beginning of 2024, it was a lot going on with him. Um, rumors of homelessness. And I don't even think it was rumors because I watched a video of him sitting down with a young YouTuber. I think it was like after, like he, he was just like after he was at the homeless place. I don't know. Allegedly, because my memory be m- memory and all this stuff is alleged. So allegedly. So he was homeless. He was broke. People were stealing his money. It was money mismanagement. Um, he is popping right now on the music. And um, his new song is called He Abusing Me. Y'all have to listen to this shit. And on top of it, I love how y'all turning him up where he really doing his dance move. He do that love one in everyone. Like, what boy? I need Shamar, I know you be in Chicago a lot. Come and teach me that dance because you do it to everything. Even he abusing me. Like, what? And then he sang it in a ballet style. Like, this nigga is not playing. He meant that. He abusing me. He fighting back with the dance. What? Oh my gosh, Shamar, we love you. Um yeah but even with that being said i hope that shamar did find some people that are for him because he has been taken advantage of multiple times in this industry i was watching a video with the lady who was supposed to be his old manager she was being accused of stealing from him and in a lot of ways she did and a lot of people know how to dress up some lies because girl what I don't even say want to say lies because I think a lot of what she was saying was facts. Like, yeah, Shamar 
did have her as a manager. Yes, Shamar did ask her for $500 for bookings. But if you're getting thousands of dollars, even if he only asked for $500 as a good person and his, ma and his manager, who I feel like should be looking out for his best interests, uh, why are you taking all the money, girl? She was taking all his look money and did not care about it. So, um, Shamar, why are you popping right now? Please, please, please get you a good team. Get you a good lawyer. Get you some people that actually care about you who want you not only to be popular and successful, but to be comfortable because like being popular is cool. Being successful is, is cool. Feeling like you have some type of celebrity status is cool, but we don't want to see you again at the homeless shelter. We don't want you again to not have any money and be online asking you for money and all that. No, we want you to be good. We want you to be online giving money out. So get you some good people. That's going to make sure you okay. Um, and with that being said, it's a lot of sad stories, y'all. Okay, so yesterday I was watching my favorite app, and it was a story that I heard about uh, this young man named Liam Ashley who passed away. Um, his story kind of started in 2006 when his parents sent him to jail because he stole their car, right? So he stole their car. His parents decided, hey, we want to press charges because Liam was out of control. He wasn't listening to him, them. He wasn't really doing what they were asking him to do. Um, so they pressed those charges. They actually thought it was the safest place. I'm like, what did I right here? Yeah, they thought that jail was the safest place for him. So I'm just going to pause there. I feel like if you're thinking jail is the safest place for your son, y'all probably need to move. Because whatever is happening in and around your home is not beneficial to him. He's actually spiraling in the wrong direction, especially if you think jail is the safest place for him. Um, that's crazy as hell. But, you know, parents get overwhelmed. They don't know what to do. It's their first time you know, doing this too. So they're just trying their hardest. So they sent him to jail. He sold the car. So when he was being transported in like the jail van, um, allegedly, because allegedly most of these facts are facts that I'm getting and I read over them, but Hey, I don't have the money to pay nobody. If they say, Oh, well, actually it wasn't the jail fan. It was the whatever. I'm not going to spiral into that. Let's just say allegedly. So he was in a jail fan being transported and a guy named George Baker, who was already identified as being a dangerous criminal was being transported with him. And Long story short, he killed him because he said he looked like he was a tattletale or a narc. You know, he was white, so he used the word narc. Um, so he killed him. He beat the boy up. He went to the hospital, but I guess his injuries were so bad that his parents the next day had to take him off of life support. And 15 minutes later, he passed away. Um, first of all, I just want to say my heart goes out to those parents because having to make that horrible decision to send your son to jail, I know it's hard because what the heck? And you guys obviously didn't really have a community to help you with him or anybody that he listened to. Something happened where your son did not want to listen to you and you felt like him going to jail was the safest place because maybe you thought he would be protected but those guards all they're trying to do is get home to their kids in the state of whatever we're living right now we can only do our best to get in and get out so I think like I don't know I don't know that's just so sad it's heartbreaking I feel bad for the parents and then long story short I feel like what makes it worse is that this man only got 18 years. I thought that light, I thought they could at least give him 25 years. I don't care how many other years he had, but you murdered this boy on this bus for literally no reason. He didn't even do nothing to you. And he was a child. So I'm just trying to figure out how were they transporting a child who stole a car with the grown ass man? That's way too dangerous. Now, it could have gone so many different horrible ways. And I feel like, why are we the only ones who know that? That's that's horrible. So with that being said, y'all, watch your kids. There's a lot going on in this world. And jail is not the safest place for them. It's really not. It's no rehabilitation happening there. Um, and these people, a lot of people that are in jail have serious mental illness. And the problem with that is we're just housing them at a place that's going to make their mental illness problem worse. 
So you're putting them in jail and they're crazy as hell. And guess what? They get even crazier. And then they just keep going right back in or in and out if they can, depending on what they did. So, yeah, let's get our mental health system together. Get some people to help us with the mental health. So let's ease on down. Let's just move on to Baddies Midwest, right? So it was highly anticipated. The girls love Baddies. I personally am getting tired of baddies. I'm getting tired of baddies because how many old ass women just outside drinking all day with kids and then fighting for nothing are we going to watch? That shit is retarded. It's it's overdone. And I'm not saying get some 20 year old girls to do it, but act like you got enough sense to do something else. If you really have money, like, come on now, like it makes no sense. Girls with money don't do dumb shit like that. They sit pretty, they turn up, they have a good time. So let's go on to Baddies Midwest. This is one part that really kind of got me annoyed. Baddies Midwest. Why why do y'all decide to well I don't even want to say the hooded spot. So the one of the first stops that I seen that they had for Chicago when they were like touring to see us or whatever was they went to Maywood. I think they went to S2 allegedly. Cause you know the girls are trying to play. Allegedly, I don't know. Um and I'm gonna just say Taziki, okay? Krishan Zicker, Taziki. Girl, come and teach me how to say your name nicely, because we can be friends. I don't do all of that, okay? I would call the police on your ass. Or I would just get somebody else to play with you. Because, bitch, I'm not playing with you. I'm grown as fuck. I got a real job. The hell? You hoes out here punching teeth out. Bitch, I need all of mine. I'm not doing that with y'all. It's not even that serious. Like, how do that make sense? And then y'all getting up in age. One head hit. Bitch, you out of here. You got children. And you're, what was my mom fighting for? Oh, she said these hoes can never talk to her like that. It was nothing. You guys were at home and your mom was getting their block knocked off for no apparent reason. And at the ripe age of 30 something, at the ripe age of 29, 30 something, 40, Natalie Nunn, you should be ashamed of yourself. I honestly don't care. Like, I normally try to tread lightly, but let's be real. Natalie, you should be ashamed. All the shit you're doing is really, really bad. You're giving the girls the wrong example. You're telling the girls to go to Dubai and all this and that. Give us footage. Let us watch. Let us go with you live. Let's go with you live to Dubai. We want to see everything. If that's, if that's, if baddies and all this has really gotten you there to be a really, a woman of class, show us the class. Because all this fighting and stuff, that does not give money. That does not give higher class. And to be black and to be living in America, you don't have to be a hood AB. If you know what I mean. You don't have to be there. It's other shit you could be like. You really want to get money? Like, show us how to get some money and not buy. What is this? Are y'all going to have like a wrestling tournament or something? Like, if you guys going to do that, I, I'm with that. If that's, if that's what you girls trying to do, get the money out of fine. But all this other shit too much. But anyway. The girls went to Maywood. I guess they went to S2 and Maywood, allegedly. Um, Taziki got... This girl stole off her or whatever for no apparent reason because I guess people just want to do stuff. But let's keep going because Baddies Midwest, I feel like it hasn't even aired, but all that I'm hearing about it is getting worse and worse and worse and worse and worse to the point in which, like, you kind of want to watch it, but as a melanated woman from Chicago you kind of don't want to watch it because like y'all promoting this shit to kids like not promoting it to kids but the people who I know that's really hyped up and fanned out about baddies is children like elementary high school girls they're fanned out about this dumb shit but anyway Taziki got hit whatever but they're saying Taziki met her match in the house with this girl named Bad Dolly so I guess they got into a fight and Taziki, Taziki wasn't looking so good. Her hand was messed up. I think she had some other little ailments that she had to deal with. But they said Bad Dolly was looking great. So that says, girl, everybody gets beat up sometimes. You are not you are not God. Like it's somebody out here that's stronger than you that will whoop your behind. Like all of this stuff, y'all fighting for nothing. Oh, she looked at me wrong. Oh, she brushed past me. Y'all sit sit your ass down somewhere. But at the same time, I feel like Taziki wouldn't just fight for nothing. So a part of me do want to see that clip of why they even started. Because she seems like out of all the crazies in the house, she seems like the most sane one because she knows what those hands can do. Period. But with that being said, 
the other part that's now coming out about baddies, Mia West is, first of all, I didn't even know Akbar was on there. Shout out to Akbar. She's looking freaking amazing. Like, she's looking great. She's looking so snatched. The face is facing. The body is bodying. Like, she don't need not one more surgery, allegedly. But she'll tell you herself beyond that. Like, but beyond just getting a surgery, she didn't just, What's that girl's name in Baddies Who's Thick? And she got all them surgeries. The first BBL, nobody could tell. Second BBL, okay, it's looking a little better. Oh, Roly. She didn't Roly it. She got the um, stomach surgery first. So her stomach, like, so where she would eat less and she was losing weight, she was working out. And then she got her other surgeries done. And you could tell, like, that's the difference. Akbar looks fucking ama freaking amazing. She looks snatched. She looks amazing. But with that being said, we all know how Akbar's hood is hell. And I don't want to say they ran Akbar out the house, but Akbar had to go find peace. She's like, I loved you ladies. It was cool, but I, I just can't. I just can't. Like, y'all watch the little thing. Watch it. Oh, I'm out. Y'all make sure y'all have a, a good season. But baby, I got to go. I'm not okay. And what's going on um, is not okay. So to the baddies that I met, I enjoyed you, girl. Y'all live it up. Have a nice day. And y'all be careful. Akbar, she is not, she did not come to play with y'all. She has children. She's on the, I don't even know why she would even be on there in the first place. Because every other day when I see her on live, she on the internet preaching. Like Akbar was really bad and into it with a lot of people for a long time but I feel like maybe even just this year she's been way more inspirational way more about doing the right thing staying out of trouble so her being on baddies just seemed like not the way she was trying to rebrand herself and with that being said she decided enough was enough and took her behind home so I support your decision girl and um We'll see why. I just want to know why. And that's why I can't stand baddies. Because I do not go. I do not like the narrative. But I, now I want to know. And I feel like just because it is reality TV. like, And it's not a fake story. Even so, though some of it is a fake story. It makes you more intrigued about the why. So now I want to know why. Akbar, tell us why. But with that being said, y'all, it's so much going on. We only have a few months left in 2024. I hope you guys met all of your, what was it? What do you call those things? Your New Year's resolutions. Don't ask me about mine because that's my business. I may have, may have not. I'm working on it. Still, I got three months. Yeah, I got I got three months to do it and I think I got it. Okay. So send this video to a friend, like, comment, share, subscribe. That was one of the things that was on my stuff. So come on, help me out. But with that being said, let's go on to our motivational corner with all this fighting and crazy stuff. We got to like uplift ourselves. Right. And to all my girls who are in entre entrepreneurship, if you're trying to do stuff on social media. I just want to ask you one question. How bad do you want it? My favorite video that I watch all the time, I even show it to my students, um, it's Eric Tomix. He's one of the best motivational speakers. He's an amazing guy. He has a motivational speech called How Bad Do You Want It? And in that speech, he tells a little bit, a little parable about a guy who wanted to be successful. So he went to a guru and the guru was like, OK, well, meet me at the beach at 5 a.m. and I'll teach you how to be successful. So the guy does everything that he thinks he's supposed to do. He comes there in his suit. He's looking good. He's got his pen, his computer his whatever. He's ready to roll. So. He just still don't understand it. So the guru is like, um, all right, well, come on over here. So they walk and then the water is like coming up to his feet. And he's like, I did not wear my good outfit for this. He was like, no, nah, don't you trust me? He said, yeah, I trust you. You're a guru. You know what you're doing. He said, come a little deeper. So they go a little deeper. It's at his knees. He's looking at the guy like, what the heck are we doing? Because I got on my good outfit and I did not come for all this. I want some help. But the guru said, no, nah, let's keep going. So once they get to the point in which the water was maybe about his neck, the guru pushes this man's head in the water and he's just like fighting him to try to get out and at the last moment when the guy's like gasping for hair he hair lord when the guy's asking for air gasping for air he releases his head and he asks him what did you want to do when you were underwater and the man says breathe 
And the guru says, in order to be successful, you want me to teach you to be successful. You got to want your success as much as bad as you want to breathe. And there you will be successful. What does that mean for us, ladies? That means we can't cut corners. We can't give excuses. We have to make our schedule and stick to it. Because as bad as we want our sleep, as bad as we want to party, as bad as we want to be on social media, we got to do it all with a purpose. And we will have to do it as bad as we want to breathe. Okay. If you have asthma out there, you know, if you know, you know, when you can't breathe, all you want to do is breathe. So if you're not successful, all you should want to be is successful. We got a schedule for that, ladies. I love you to life. Until next time, you already know who it is. It's your girl, your sister, and your best friend, 777 AM. Shout out to Kelly, my producer, Kills the Bells. She had her mic on today. Her mic was mic. And next time, girl, I'm going to have to have some more, uh, you know, calling the men. I don't know what they call, you know, at church when you say something, they repeat it or something. I don't know. Y'all need to hear her voice a little bit more. Uh, You need to follow her at Kales with a Z, the Bells on Instagram. Beyond that, shout out to Royalty Productions. Thank you guys so much for allowing me to have my wonderful podcast here. And shout out to God, my family. And shout out to me. Your great sister and your best friend, 777 AM. Number word, number again. It's hard out here. Send me a cash app. Peace out.